Hello friends, this video on practical geometry part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have learned about line segments and circles, let's talk about angle. Now angles are going to be more interesting. So we all know what an angle is. So an angle is a measure of orientation between two rays with a common end point. So to understand the concept of an angle, the best example to consider would be a lunch box or any box for that matter. The moment you open the box, what happens? You see that the orientation between the lead that is the top surface and the bottom surface they, that keep changing. For example, when the lunch box is closed, in this case, you would see that the orientation is like this. So if this is the base surface, now this surface is the base surface and this is the lead. So they the angle between them is zero degrees when it is closed. Now the moment you open it like this, so you see this is the angle formed between the lead and the bottom surface. So this time you have some angle, this angle could be 60 degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, some angle. Now when you have opened it completely, so the, all the more that the angle has also increased all the more. So now it may be it is 120 degree or 135 degree or something like that. So basically as you open the lunch box, the orientation between the two surfaces keep changing. Now this orientation we are actually measuring it between two rays. So this measure of orientation between two rays with the common end point. So this is the common end point is called angle. So we measure angle in degrees. Now the question is how do we draw an angle? So we understand the concept of angle but how about drawing an angle? Now here we have three angles on the screen 30 degrees, 70 degree and 150 degree. So let's see how can we draw them. So first let's learn how to draw an angle using a protractor. So that is an easier way of drawing angles. So you draw a line, a baseline and now you place the protractor over it such that the baseline of the protractor lies exactly along the line that you have drawn. Perfect. Now you have to draw, let's say, a 30 degree. So where is 30 degree? Here. So you mark this point as 30 and then you join this point with the central point. So that is how you can draw a 30 degree. Similarly, if you want to draw a 70 degree, so this point is 70. So you mark this point and then join these points with the center of the protractor. So the moment you join it, what do you get? So this angle is 70 degree. So which are the arms of the angle? So this is one arm and this is another arm. So that's how we draw 70 degrees. If you have to draw 30 degrees, as I mentioned, so this is 30, so mark a point, join it, so this angle is 30 degree. You have to draw 150, so do the same thing. Now 150 is here and this point is here, so you join it. Now can you tell me which angle is 150? Obviously this angle because 0 degree was here and we started measuring 150 from here. So this is 150 degree. So in this fashion, we can draw angles of different measures using a protractor. Now, if I ask you to copy an angle of unknown measure, that means you are given an angle. Now, I do not know what is the measure of this angle. How much degrees is this? That I don't know. But I want you to make a copy of this angle, like how we did for line segments. So in this case, protractor will not be able to help much because we do not know the exact degrees. So instead of using a protractor, we will use a compass. So we take a compass, place its needle tip at the vertex of the angle, that is the common point of the angle. And then we draw an arc like this. Now you can take any width of the compass that is up to you. So you take any convenient radius and you draw an arc like this. Once you have drawn an arc like this, what do you do? You start making the copy of this angle. So for that you draw a line and then keeping the same width as it was here. So make sure that you keep the same width of the compass and you draw an arc here. So this is your step number one. Now step number two, 
Take the compass and measure this width. That is, you place the one tip of the compass here, the other tip here. And then you keep that same width of the compass and bring it to this image. And then draw an arc here. Now make sure that you do not alter the width of the compass. Like when you measured this width, maintain that width and then go back to this new diagram and draw an arc here. Now once you have drawn this arc, you would see that this arc which you have drawn now intersects the previously drawn arc at a certain point. So mark that point. Now once you have marked that point, join this point to this end point of the line segment. So how much is this angle? We still don't know how much is this angle but all we know that this angle and this angle they are of equal measures. So in this fashion we can draw a copy of an angle of unknown measure. So we did not know the measure of the first angle but we could still make a copy of it using the compass. So the compass helped us to determine the this orientation. So for that first we drew an arc like this with the same orientation of the compass we drew an arc here then we measured this width using the compass and again maintaining the same orientation we drew, drew an arc here and that's how we made a copy of the angle. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.